I am Dr. Alan Brookstone, and this is the American EHR Partners podcast for the week of December the 12th, 2011. The topic for today is, is your clinical information being held hostage? If you have comments or suggestions regarding this topic or podcast, please send them to us via email to info at AmericanEHR.com. Millions of documents are created every day as a byproduct of delivering care. Many of these exist as standalone reports, saved in an electronic format such as Microsoft Word or in PDF documents. However, much of the information is isolated and inaccessible. Because the information in the documents is not integrated into electronic records or available in a format that allows for intelligent access or analysis, it may as well be in a paper chart. As the Meaningful Use program accelerates, practices are struggling to access important historical data that is not available to them through the current systems. What are the solutions? Is this data lost forever or is it potentially accessible? Joining me today is Dr. Chris Tackerberry. Chris is co-founder and the chief executive officer of Clinithink. Chris is a physician who practiced in anesthesiology and intensive care in the UK for nine years. He holds an MSc in computer science and has spent the last 11 years in the healthcare IT industry in various leadership roles. Chris joins us from the United Kingdom. Welcome, Chris. Alan, thanks very much indeed. Chris, can you explain in more detail the problem of data being held hostage in historical documents. How big a problem is this in the United States and is the problem the same in other countries? Physicians and other clinically focused providers have evolved a style of recording the care they deliver and communicating that care to others that's basically narrative in nature. That style is very strongly reinforced through training and education. To the human physician reader, a letter or a note about the patient is highly structured, rich, meaningful, and valuable. To a computer, it's often little more than gibberish. That's the basis of the problem we've got here. In the US, thanks to the wide use of transcription services and increasing use of EMRs, there's possibly more than a billion narrative records created each year, and I would guess that per, on a per capita basis, other countries and markets are catching up with that, but probably not to the same level. Now, if we look at this at a very high level, what can one actually do to extract data from historical records? As long as records exist as text or can be converted to text from other formats, such as voice recordings or type notes, then you can index, index that, that text and map it to a structured terminology to find out what it actually means or to find out more about what it actually means. The terminology we use is called SNOMED CT. It's a medical lexicon of about 2 million possible expressions and concepts in medicine. It's maintained by a multinational government sponsored body to which the, both the US and the UK, Australia, and a number of other nations subscribe. And it's intended as a standard for both the US and UK healthcare records by 2015. And it's an ideal platform for sharing clinical data and analyzing that data to support many different kinds of healthcare business purposes. The trick is mapping your raw narrative to something like Snowman CT. Chris, part of the magic essentially behind the technology that extracts the data is, is something called natural language processing. Now, I know a lot of organizations have worked with this in the past. Can you just explain a little bit about natural language processing and how mature is this kind of capability? Sure. Before I do, let, let me emphasize that Folks offering technology of the kind that, that we at Clinithink offer, there are a number of vendors in this space, will not be relying solely on NLP, natural language processing, as the only means of recovering meaning from the text. It's just one way of doing it, and you know, part of the magic, as you say. However, NLP stands for, as I said, natural language processing. It takes natural language, spoken or written by humans, in our case, physicians and other clinical professionals, and processes it so that the computer understands, in inverted commas, what was communicated. Wanting to do this is obviously not a, not a new problem at all. Um, the academic discipline of NLP has been well established within computer science, and its origins go back to work by Weaver and Booth in the late 1940s off the back of some of the uh, cryptographic work that took place in the Second World War. Some of the principles that have emerged from that early work are now very well understood and widely used in a range of speech and text recognition technologies 
many of which are very horizontal in nature and have nothing to do with medicine at all. The trick, I think, for our generation of vendors is to leverage that generic understanding and combine it with other techniques, as I mentioned, to deliver some useful capability. This is certainly a fascinating area because there are millions of documents being produced almost on a daily basis that have got content in them that is valuable. And when we take that in the context of meaningful use, some of that information would be very valuable to practices if they had access to it in order to report on the requirements of meaningful use as defined under the High Tech Act. Is this one of the areas where you're seeing potential for this type of technology is to assist practices with being more effective in meeting those meaningful use criteria? Absolutely. It's certainly not the only place where this kind of approach can help solve a business problem, but it is one for sure. And looking at some of the some of the basic things, for example, managing problems, meds, allergies, that kind of data, be it in a, a primary care setting or in a hospital setting, regardless of whether you're using an EMR system or you're just using documents or paper charts, is quite a difficult thing to do. And that's an area where we're seeing a lot of interest in our technology. And similarly, some of the performance and quality reporting obligations that kick in under meaningful use, particularly stage two, but certainly also stage one, people find it quite hard to recover the data required to track their progress and performance against some of those measures without being able to mine what's in the narrative part of their data. When physicians are recording information about either an encounter or a procedure that they've completed, it's much more logical to tell it as a story. But the challenge comes in when you've got to try and then convert that narrative text into, or that unstructured text into structured text. It's not easy. I mean, when you mentioned SNOMED CT and you've got 2 million plus clinical concepts in SNOMED CT, trying to identify the right concept for a particular piece of narrative text is very, very difficult. Is there a time in the future where you see physicians being able to just transcribe a narrative note and that the system would really do the coding in the background? I imagine this would be very cost effective as well for institutions who've got armies of people who have to codify their text for insurance and billing purposes. Here's my view, Alan, and maybe it's a controversial one. I find it difficult to imagine a scenario in, in real time for billing or diagnostic purposes where nobody looks at any of the coded output at all. Let me give you a, a sort of analogy. You wouldn't let Amazon order stuff for you based on, in inverted commas, the kind of thing you're looking for without you seeing it. However, we can see today how Amazon and Google can suggest amazingly accurate things that are very close to exactly what we're looking for, picked from literally you know, millions and millions of possibilities, you know, way more than the number of concepts in Snow and CT. And then doing so saves us a heap of time. And I think we're looking at exactly the same scenario in healthcare, using to some extent some of some similar techniques. I think time will tell where the balance is, but my view is that we will certainly be able to save both frontline and back office staff a lot of time by the introduction and the, the correct use and deployment of these technologies. But it will be about increasing the quality and the efficiency with which the data is captured and therefore increasing the value you can recover through the analysis of it, rather than completely replacing individuals in the process. Unless we do something to liberate the hostage data, patients, providers, payers, all of the constituents in the healthcare community are going to lose out, and I don't think we can afford that. Chris, thank you very much. appreciate your time. Alan, thank you very much indeed. Join us for the next American EHR Partners podcast. Thank you for listening. I am Dr. Alan Brookstone.